super excited as we get ready to start the fall series of all the JP's Kitchen under 500 calories that you can get and it's going to be exciting. Tonight we're going to kick off the fall and the winter but we're going to leave the summer behind. What am I making tonight? I'm making stuffed acorn squash. Super excited about this. I've made this recipe up myself. We're going to blend flavors, mix flavors, and we're going to just trick the heck out of your taste buds. So, join me. We're getting ready to fire this up. We want to thank Rodenbaugh's for all they do. They are our corporate sponsor. Rodenbaugh's for all your flooring needs, all your appliance needs, and all your mattress needs. They've been serving Collin County since, since the 1960s. Go down and see Ronald Rodenbaugh. Tell them I sent you. If you buy a KitchenAid appliance set, a three-piece set or more, you can look at $1,000 cash back. That's right, folks, $1,000 cash back rebate coming your way. They provide credit applications with credit up to $60,000 for those that are approved. So, Roden Boss, thank you for bringing JP's Kitchen to the world. So, let's get fired off. We're going to start off with acorn squash. That's what it looks like. We can come on closer and let's show them what acorn squash looks like. There's the back skin of it. That's what it looks like. An acorn. Isn't that fancy? An acorn. So, you take the acorn and you cut it in half with a big knife. And I'm going to tell you something. It takes a big, big knife because this acorn is a hard nut to crack. Blah! <laughs> hard nut to crack. Brandon would say that's dad humor. So, we've already cut it in half. We've already gutted it out. It would have seeds in it. Gut those seeds out. And you get a nice empty hole. Just like that. Right? Right. So then you're going to take your smaller knife and you're going to, to uh, go ahead and come in and create an incisor just like that. You're going to cut long ways first. Vicki, if you can get in there close and show them. And then you're going to turn it this way and you're going to cut sideways just like that. Just so it can breathe a little bit and it can cook. You're going to go ahead and preheat your oven at this point to 400 degrees. So you want to go ahead and preheat your oven. Then we're going to go ahead and make it JP Kitchen style. And this is how we're going to make it fall. First of all, squash is a wonderful fall food anyways, especially acorn squash. They're super fresh at the grocery store right now. And so they're easy to buy. They're very inexpensive. And they make for a really good starch type of feel, right? Like a sweet potato almost. So you get kind of a, a, a starchy kind of feel from it. Only 116 calories for a half of a acorn squash, and the meat is going to be super good. And I'm talking about the meat of the squash itself. So how are we going to give it that fall winter flavor? Well, we're going to take a half a teaspoon of real butter, and we're going to put that down on into the squash. Take your brush and brush it in evenly all throughout the squash. Now, I did not say margarine. Folks, do not use margarine. Use real butter. And again, this is a half a teaspoon. As you can see, a half a teaspoon is plenty. You don't need any more than that. Um, and I'm going to give you the calorie count on the half a teaspoon. I think we were at um, 17 calories. Wasn't that right, Vicki? 17 calories. It's all right. So that's what it looks like there. Then we're going to take some cinnamon. All right. Take the cinnamon, put it in your fingers, and you want to sprinkle it on. Not too much, not too little, just to get a nice look at it, nice cover. Then, instead of sugar, you know, Steve Gerard asked me this morning, he's like, you know, JP, what's the biggest difference between sugar and sugar substitutes? Are they really good for you, not good for you? Which one's better, which one's not better? I'll tell you what, Steve, we're going to avoid that altogether, and we're going to instead add a teaspoon of maple syrup, okay? So we're going to brush that out into our acorn squash and then we're going to brush that all throughout our squash. Now our acorn squash is now ready. Get a nice brush so you've got it all over. See how that butter mixes with the cinnamon with the syrup? Mmm, -mm, good. Doesn't this sound incredibly fattening? It's not. 34 calories for the teaspoon of maple syrup um, again, 17 calories for the half a teaspoon of butter, 116 calories for the acorn squash, and of course no calories in cinnamon. You take this, put it in, in a, on a pan or in a dish like such, put that in your oven at 400 degrees for an hour and 15 minutes. Now, Vicki, we're going to go over here to the oven. 
in the oven, of course you would know that I would have already pre-cooked these acorn squash, right? Because I watch cooking shows. Uh, I probably should watch my own cooking show. And look at this. Look at that, folks. That is beauty. These are acorn squashes, already done, because of course, you know me, I want to make sure we're ready to go for you. And it looks amazing, and oh, it smells like winter. Oh, bring on the snow. It smells wonderful. You take this, you throw it in the oven for 400 degrees, hour and 15 minutes, and you're going to have very tender acorn squash. But we're not done yet. We're going to let that sit there for a minute. We're going to come back to our oven, and we're going to turn our oven back on to 400 degrees. And I'm going to tell you why later. But we want to go ahead and preheat the oven again at 400 degrees. All right, follow me back over here. Here we go. So now that we've got our acorn squash done, now it's time to get ready for the filling. Because I'm going to make stuffed acorn squash. Take a yellow onion or red onion, a nice large one. Cut it in half, of course. Take... Slice it just like that. Then, nice and thin cuts because we're going to saute onion and bell pepper. You know how much I love onion and bell pepper. I cook with it all the time. It doesn't have to be real small, but we want a good amount of onion in there. And that's going to break up very nicely. Then we're going to take a half of a bell pepper, and we're going to do the same thing with a half of a bell pepper. Remember folks, don't cut your fingers off. That's very bad. Don't do that. Alright, then we're going to come and cube them. And we're going to grab another piece. Remember, half a bell pepper. You must be thinking to yourself, uh, JP, have you lost your pea-picking cowboy hat mind? Maybe I have. Or, maybe I'm on to something. So again, we're going to finish cubing. If you'll notice, I'm in a new kitchen. Shay and I have relocated to a new home here in Murphy, Texas. And oh my goodness, we love our home. And we want to thank everybody in Murphy for welcoming us and what a great time that we've had moving in. Alright, we're going to bring our veggies over here to the stove. As you notice, where'd Vicky go? Vicki, how could you show my back? You're a terrible camera person. And you're a theater teacher. Alright folks, we're going to go ahead and we're going to fire up. And if you'll notice, it's gas. Now we're cooking with gas. Yeah! Alright, you're going to put that on about 7. And of course, what does JP's Kitchen use? Avocado oil spray! That's right! Only the best. Give a good shake up. We're going to get a good coating of avocado oil spray on the pan. And then we're going to go ahead and take it. We're going to add our onions and bell pepper. And we're going to cook that down here. So that, that way we get a real nice blend of veggies. While that's starting to cook down, we're going to come back this direction. And now we're going to show you the summertime part of this. I've already peeled and cut up a mango. The mango, because we're only going to use about a tablespoon to two tablespoons, is 6 to 12 calories. Add your mango into your food processor, as such, unless you have a piece left over, and you got to eat it. That's a bummer of a day. I get that. All right. Then, we're going to take our very fancy green weeds. These are green weeds from the garden. You can go out front, probably if you've not mowed your lawn, Go out and pick some weeds and just throw them in. Just kidding. No weeds. Not at all. This is cilantro. Mango and cilantro. Give it a nice cut. We're going to use about a half a cup, if you'll notice. So we got about a cup of 5.8 ounces, a cup of mango. And then we're going to throw in about a half a cup of cilantro. You know what they call it out in West Texas? Cilantro? Maybe. I may just be making that up too. So throw that in there. By the way, um, none of these recipes come out of a book. Uh, none of these recipes I've ever tried before. So we're doing it for the first time together. Then we're going to take and we're going to add lime. 
are going to peel the lime because we're going to put the whole lime in there. Isn't that a song? I think it could be a song. I'm going to put the whole lime in there in my hands. I'm going to put the... Oh, that's not the song. I'm sorry. I think that was a song. That's not that song. No. Anyways, so we're going to go ahead and peel this lime up. And we're going to take about a quarter of a half of the lime. About that much. We don't want to kill it. And we're going to put that in there as well. Put your lid on. Of course, I love machines. You know what machines do? They do this. Love machines. So here we go. We're going to slow pulse. And let that get a good compost type of substance. We don't want it to be chunky. We want it to be kind of a compost-ish looking kind of thing. We're going to put a stop on that. We're going to use our wooden spoon. Look how pretty that is. And smell that. Woo, buddy, that smells like summer to me. That is summertime cooking. So, what do we do? We grab the famous wooden spoon, because JP loves the wooden spoon. Now, I will tell you that Katerina, not a fan of the wooden spoon. Of course, I can't tell you the story when she was a child, and she got chased up the stairs with a wooden spoon, but something like that kind of happened. I guess it does when you're little. All right. Put your lid back on. This time we're going to go ahead and we're going to go high. We're going to really blend everything together. Get that cilantro, that mango, that lime really blended in well together. Because again, we want it to be kind of a compost, but we also want it to kind of be a paste. Kind of an in between the two. Alright, let's take a peek at that. Boy, can you hear Oh, now there you go. There you go. That's what I'm talking about right there. Can you see that, everybody? Look at how beautiful that is. Pull this out because it is done. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So, like I said, in between a little bit of chunk, but in between compote, not quite a paste. Of course, we got to taste it. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. JP's a genius! Hit a home run with that. That's got a great flavor to it. The mango, the cilantro blending together with the lime. The lime gives it a little bit of kick at the end. It's going to be an amazing, amazing addition. I know you're thinking, JP, you're crazy because look at this. Acorn cam, acorn cam, acorn cam. See that? That's, that's winter. That says fall. That says cinnamon. And what am I doing? I'm adding summer. That says sunshine, sunshine. Yeah, so anyway, all right, Mickey, we're back over here. All right. Listen to that. Tell me that doesn't sound good. Boy, that sounds good. Woo, buddy. Look at how they brown up very quickly. Now, again, if you're using gas, you want to do it on about a seven. You'll see how nothing is sticking. You got a nice coating on the pan of the avocado oil spray. And you can smell the onions now cooking. So I've got blended smells in here. I've got cinnamon maple syrup, acorn squash. I've got mango, cilantro, lime, and now I've got bell peppers and onions, and you're thinking, you have lost your pea pick in mind. Well, if you think I've lost my mind on this so far, wait until I show you what I'm about to add here in just a minute. Oh, yeah. Boom, boom. Just sorry. Couldn't help myself. I felt a little Tom cruise -ish there for a second. So, we've got tonight, we're going to use ground chicken. All white meat, of course. This is a little bit higher in calories. It's got a little higher fat in it. That's why I'm using it tonight. Um, so I can get a little grease off of it. But what you're going to be able to have as a serving is one quarter of this. So if you cut it in half and then take a quarter, that's a four ounce serving, 170 calories. Extra lean turkey, only 120 calories. So, but tonight I wanted a little bit more of the fat that's in the chicken. So we're going to do that. And we're going to keep it on seven. What that means is, is we're not abandoning it. We're going to stay with it. Because if we abandon it, it might burn. So what do we got here? We've got onion powder. Take a couple pinches of onion powder. Get a nice coating across the chicken. And as you'll notice, I've covered the entire bit of the chicken that's inside the um, wok. 
Then, garlic powder, same thing, grab a pinch of it, and again, you want to get a nice coverage of it. Now, I like using the, I like using the rock salt, and so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to take a pinch of that, and again, we we'll put some over the top of it. Much prefer the rock salt. Now for the, huh? Uh huh? Yeah. Cumin. Who would have thunk it? A little pinch of cumin, sprinkle over the top. Now the nose is really going nuts. It's going, what are you doing? We're having a good time. Do another little pinch of the cumin. Very small pinch. Crack my pepper. Alright, now we're cooking, folks. Now chop that up. Really, really fine. As you can see, our chicken is already cooking very nicely. And it's going to cook quickly because it's on seven. Now, if we eat this, stuff simply... We're now going to stuff our acorn squash with the meat mixture. Now, you're going to get about four ounces inside your acorn. Remember that you can have more because we have filled it. Oops, making a mess. We have filled it with onions and bell peppers. So you can have more of it. That's about four ounces. And we're going to fill up this little one here. And again, if you eat it without the rice, you're at 389 calories. If you eat it with the rice, you're going to be at 489 calories, still keeping you under 500 calories for JP's Kitchen. So, and that's what we really want, is we want each of your meals to be under 500 calories, so you're eating 1,500 calories a day. For a woman, um, they say that at 1,100 calories a day, you lose weight. For a man, it's 1,500. So if you're wanting to maintain and eat healthy and have a healthy diet, then 1,500 calories is going to do just fine if you've got any kind of activeness during your day. If you're sedimentary, you probably want to do a little walking after work before you go in and have dinner or do it after dinner. Go and take a walk just to kind of burn some of those extra calories off. But again, we're keeping everything under 500 calories, which is very good. I'm going to do this, Vicki. And again, we've now mixed a little cumin, a little onion, a little bell pepper, a little garlic, a little black pepper, a little rock salt with cinnamon and maple syrup. So you're probably thinking to yourself, JP, you've lost your mind. <laughs> maybe I have. I doubt it, but maybe I have. So far, everything I've cooked has turned out to be amazing. And it's plenty of food. Look at that. Look at that. That is a ton of of food. Now, to finish it off, a little feta cheese. Any hard cheese is fine that you want to use. I'm going to use feta cheese tonight. And we're just going to sprinkle a little bit on. Of course, I'm making a mess. I'm sure Shay would love that. Um, we're not using a quarter of a cup. We've already figured out kind of what the calorie counts on it, and we'll give you the calorie count here in just a minute. While that is melting some of the cheese on that. You just want to put this in the oven until the cheese melts. Alright, so let's get the oven door. Put that in. We're going to let that cook for about five minutes, five to six minutes. All right, we're going to come back over here because now it's time for us to grab our spoon and get ready to load up our cilantro cilantro mango and lime mix. Look at how summery that looks. That looks very summerish. Looks very summerish to me. I like that. Summerish. Is that a word? I don't know if that's really a word or not. Maybe it's a word. Maybe it's not a word. Probably not a word. Could be a word. Maybe not a word. 
Anyways, does anybody have any questions this evening? Vicki, do we have anybody that's piped in or tuned in tonight, or are we just talking to ourselves? You've got a ton of people. Anybody have any questions about tonight's JP's Kitchen? Can you use cheddar? Uh, no. I highly recommend it. Um, there's a Vermont hard cheddar out there, but it's a little bit higher in calories. You want to be careful with the cheddars because they seem to have, they have a tendency to have more cream in them, um, a little more fat in them, whereas the Parmesan, the Swisses, the Fettas, they have a little less fat in them. Your hard cheddars may be a little bit better, like your old English cheddar or your Vermont cheddar, but it would need to be an aged and, um, like I said, a harder cheese. So, but you got to be careful because the cheese catch up with you. You're not using a whole lot of cheese anyways, but so why add the calories? You know, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Plus, with the flavors that we're using, with the summer we're getting to use here in a second, and we've got the fall flavors, and we've got the meat mixture, which is more of a um, fall flavor, and we're going to add summer to it. And you want to kind of make the cheese also kind of a summery cheese, something that's a little bit lighter, uh, may have a little bit different flavor to it, maybe a sharper flavor. So maybe a sharp Vermont aged cheddar, but again, very little. Use very, very little, like a ta you know, tablespoon, two tablespoons. Because really what you're doing it for is looks, also for your mind, right? Because you want to convince your mind that it's okay and you've just cheated. You've had a horrible cheat day. You ate a teaspoon of cheese. <laughs> just kidding. Michelle Estridge says, do you prefer ground chicken? They use a lot of ground turkey, but do you taste a difference between ground chicken and ground turkey? There is a difference. The chicken has a tendency to dry out a little bit more. Um, that's why I add a little more water um, than I would normally on the turkey. I prefer extra lean turkey, but again, I wanted a little bit more of the fat content. You also pick up 50 extra calories um, by eating the ground chicken. And so that's why I'm also not a big fan normally. But for a dish like this, I want a little more fat in my meat. And if I go up one to just lean chicken, it's like 220 calories. And so that's even more. So extra lean turkey at 120 calories, or do the, the um, white chicken uh, ground at 170 calories. And again, that's four ounces of that. But when you're adding all the bell peppers and onions, it's going to turn into about six or eight ounces. And let's say you don't like bell pepper and onions. Then use yellow zucchini, or use uh, zucchini, uh, not yellow zucchini, yellow squash, or use zucchini. If you don't like those vegetables, find some vegetables that you like that have kind of a hard um, hardness to them if they're not cooked. Cut those up real fine and throw them in to volumize your food. I like volumizing my food. So just kind of a hint there on being able to do that. Do we have any other questions, Vicki? Stephanie Britton wants to know if you can make the sounds like you did for the machine. For the machine, the sounds. Like that, Stephanie? Was that the right sounds? <laughs> um, also, just let everybody know, I am exploring the idea of running for House District 89. Um, I've spoken with the Commission on Judicial Conduct. I've spoken with um, the, our, our lawyers down in Austin, and they said that by law, uh, I can't make any decisions really until December the 2nd. So I'll be making a decision December the 2nd, but definitely exploring that idea. Just give everybody the heads up. And JP's Kitchen is back. We'll have our fall menu. Super excited about the fall menu. You're going to see some rice being added into the fall menu. Also, if you notice, the rice I made was cilantro lime rice to carry on with that spring summery feeling to go with the fall touch in the meat and the acorn squash. Very fun combination. It's like you're telling your brain, okay, it's okay to leave summer behind now. This is my last bite of summer, and I'm welcoming them in the fall and the winter. So let's go check our acorn squash. How much uh, cilantro did you put in the uh, half a cup. Half a cup to three quarters. Oh, yes. Half a cup to three quarters of a cup of cilantro in the rice. A half a lime squeezed into the rice. A little bit of rock salt, and we're good to go. All right. First of all, Vicki, can you smell the feta cheese? Can you smell it? I can't. Oh, doesn't it smell wonderful? It does. Oh, man, that smells wonderful. Ah, so now we're going to go ahead and kick this on to broil on high, and we're going to let that broil for about two minutes to let it finish melting. We've softened it. Now it's time to melt it. Then when that comes out, we're going to get a plate. So let's come over here. And we're going to grab ourselves a plate. And we're going to put some rice on that plate. Now, a half a cup of cooked rice is about what you want. Because you can use a half a cup of uncooked rice 
And that's about a half, or, or not, yeah, quarter cup, I'm sorry, a quarter cup of uncooked rice is the calorie count on that. And so we're going to use a half a cup, put that on there. We're going to come over here and we're going to grab ourselves a fork. See, I should have been better prepared. See, JP's Kitchen first night back, already having production issues. I'm going to fire my production manager. Oh, I am the production manager. I guess I better not do that. All right. Our rice is nice and tender. I like my rice tender. Um, what I do is I let it I let it cook for about 18 to 20 minutes. Then I turn the fire off and let it just continue to cook so it's tender and it's not um, too soft and gushy, gushy, blech. So I don't like gushy, gushy rice, blech. All right. Oh, no, Ravenhold said, what can I use in place of rice? Uh, you don't, nothing. You can just eat the squash. Um, the squash will stand as a starch. It's kind of like a sweet potato. So you don't even need to have the rice. You can just bypass the rice altogether. And that's what I would recommend. Um, if you're dying for something as a bed for it to sit on, then I would recommend cabbage. Take and, and slice up cabbage. Uh, put a half a teaspoon of butter in that. A little salt and pepper. And cook that down. And then make yourself a bed. And then put it on a bed of cabbage. Gives you kind of an Asian flair to that. All right, let's go back over here, because we should be just about done, and we are. Oh, my goodness, it smells amazing. So, let's pull this out of the oven. Doesn't that smell wonderful? God, it smells good. i got to grab another hand. As I like to say, God is good. Smells good, looks good, and super healthy. So if you were to eat one acorn squash with no rice, you're looking at 389 calories is what you're looking at. And so it's amazing. The flavors and the smells are absolutely amazing. So we're going to go ahead now, and we're going to pull over our plate with our rice. And again, um, like for Devona, for you, you don't have to do the rice. Grab your acorn squash. Look how tender that is when I picked it up. That was beautiful. And you can take your meat and dig it out of there. Put it on your bed of rice. Just like that. Now, we're going to take our cilantro mango lime mix. And this you're just going to drizzle over the top, which is why we want it to be kind of a compotish feel, and then some into your acorn squash. And then, Sandy Myers, Teasland said, is that a full or half squash? It's a half. A half of an acorn squash is 116 calories, Sandy. And so um, you want to stay with the half. If you go with the full, you definitely want to kill the rice, okay? Because the acorn squash is going to replace like a sweet potato. And so you don't want 232 calories of um, acorn squash and then add another 100 calories of rice. So we're going to take a bite first. Look at how tender that is. Look at that, how that came out. That scooped out amazing, okay? And again, you know, you don't have to put a whole cube of butter in there. This is a half a teaspoon of butter is what this is. <laughs> My mouth is going amazing. The cilantro... Mixed with the winter, I get the summer first on my taste buds. Then once that settles in, then I get the fall on my taste buds. I feel like summer is going away and winter is here. And then we've got a taste, of course, our chicken and pepper and onion mix. Oh, my goodness gracious. Ladies and gentlemen, this tastes amazing. I wish you could be in my kitchen with me right now having what I'm getting ready to have for dinner. With the rice, 489 calories. Without the rice, 389 calories. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed JP's Kitchen. Does anybody else have any questions they'd like to ask before we sign off for the evening? Devona said it would be incredible with the cabbage. Absolutely. All right, folks, Road again. I want to thank Roden Boz. Get out there and visit Roden Boz for all your appliance needs, flooring needs, and bedding needs at RodenBoz.com. Here in Allen, serving Collin County since 1960s. Everybody have a great night. This is JP signing off with JP's Kitchen. The fall has begun.